Hello, my art-loving friends. This just showed up, and this is Jazza's Carry All Studio. At least it's supposed to be. And I wanted to give you my first honest, unedited opinions of it. So we will open this up together and kind of just see what we think. And we go. I got mine loaded with the water media. Okay, so here's the print. Signed. <laughs> nice. Love it. I'll be putting that up on my wall eventually, someday. And I think these were the extra, if you met a certain goal, they added in extra products. Not if you personally, if the whole project met a certain goal, they added in products. So we have a pencil case or pencil insert and pencil or marker insert here, I think, anyway. Wow, the packaging is kind of impressive here. Let me grab scissors again. Oh boy, I see fun stuff in there. But first things first, let's figure out what's in this big bag or which bag this is. It should be the big one. Let's see which colors I ended up receiving. I think they produced both of the colors that I was asking for because you had to do a survey about which colors you would purchase. Ooh, um, this seems extremely fancy, you guys. First impression. Let me put the box down and we'll explore this bag first and then we'll go back to the rest of the stuff in the box. Okay, so this is really thick. A little tag with this on it. Jazza. Probably will leave that on there for now. Really thick flap. The bag itself is heavy, but not too heavy. Like it's not going to be all the weight of your art supplies. So that's good. This is all really thick. I like that. It just seems high quality. And I don't know if you noticed how easy that zipper zipped. Really easily. Like some zippers you have to kind of struggle with. This one is nice and smooth, at least for now. We'll see how it is after it gets some dust in it, huh? The handle, backpack straps, shoulder straps, which I think is just great. Interior pocket, also nice easy zip. This is very padded. This outside is very padded. I assume maybe your laptop can go in here. I kind of forget how he had it set up, but we'll just explore this together and figure it out. Oh yeah, this is the very lined padded pocket. Wow, that's fancy. Now the lining material itself, I was going to say seems thin, but actually when I pull it out, it's thick. It just doesn't feel like it's thick until you feel it on its own. So an extra little padded pocket. Okay, it's good. I tend to bring my Microsoft Surface Pro with me when I go anywhere on a trip, basically. These are supposed to be magnetic, right? Or they actually snaps. I don't know if they're magnetic, but they snap in. So an extra pocket on the outside, holy moly. Bottle holder on the side, bottle holder on this side, but boy, that'd have to be a skinny bottle. That's tight, so it can hold the bottom part of my hot cup. Yeah, so you're gonna have to have a skinny water bottle to fit in there. And all these outside pockets. So that was all that was in there, right? Yes. The one thing, it just keeps falling over. I wish they kind of would have thought of that. I don't know if you could have like made a little strap so this could be here and strap to the bag so it wouldn't loosen and you could kind of prop it up on the lid. That would have been cool. More changes that he, <laughs> he probably <laughs> wouldn't have wanted to make. Okay, so this pocket comes with a bigger elastic holder, probably for markers, all right, and it's the same size as the bigger one of these. And this one obviously is smaller, so it could fit in there. And this is thick enough that I wondered if you could fit more than one of these in there, but I doubt it. Once you put markers on both sides, it's probably gonna be pretty full. And here we go. Another little pocket. Curious if my cell phone would fit in there. Nope. <laughs> Dang it. Um, that's not great. I'll have to find a different place for the cell phone, I guess. I kind of like the fact that it would have zipped up with the cell phone in there, but 
Now, could go on the side in the water bottle holder at least. Seems like it was gonna hold it pretty securely. Bottom pocket, just a nice big open pocket. Great for cords, longer things. Maybe if you had like longer paint brushes, they could go in there. Curious, I was just curious if a palette like this could fit in there. The answer is yes. So the Caran d'Ache gouache palette could fit in that pocket. I don't know why you'd want to put that in there, but that's an option. Okay, so it's <laughs> it's high quality. Uh, the falling over all the time drives me crazy, but maybe when it has stuff in it, it wouldn't. And then I usually just lean my bag against something anyway, so that would prevent that if you were leaning it against something. But yeah, nice high quality. Okay. So the reason I got this bag is because I needed an art bag. Both of mine had ripped and so I was in need of one and I enjoy supporting Jazza. I think he's a great guy with a genuine heart, a genuine personality and I like to support his projects when I can. Okay, that's the big bag. Let's look at the little bag and then we'll look at the art goodies they sent with it. Nicely packaged again, quite fancy. So this one I got in the Prussian blue color. The other one was obviously black. <laughs> I do like the Prussian blue a lot. It kind of makes me wish I'd got the Prussian blue in the other bag, but I do like all black. I think this the fact that this was a smaller flap is good in a different color. All right, outside pocket. Oh, more of the big holes for probably markers. You can see how skinny these are. More for pencils, and these are thicker for markers. I would think they were for markers. Slip-in pocket on the back. Again, a side holder that is so skinny you are not gonna be able to use it for anything but a pen or pencil, probably. Water brush fits in there. <laughs> Flip this open. So, Magnetic and snap, magnetic snap clasps. I'm not sure they're magnetic. I just assume they are. Zip that open. We have, again, backpack straps and just a shoulder strap without a pad, which is fine. It's a little bag. Nice big open area and an inside zipper, which is great because that's probably, if I was carrying this, I wouldn't carry a purse or anything. I would just put check, driver's license, cards in this pocket instead. So I love that they did that. And just one big open space on the inside. Okay, I could see this one being really useful for me. In fact, I'm taking a trip in March that maybe I'll put art supplies in this bag because I'm gonna have a carry-on only, and then you can have a personal item and that could be a personal item, but again, high quality. Uh, unfortunately, can't say much about them as far as their usage until I actually use them. So just stay tuned on my channel, I guess, and I'll let you know how it goes. I'll definitely be packing this one coming up for a trip. And I was going to say I might use this one for a class bag because currently I use an open top bag for class, which I accidentally left upstairs again for the hundredth time. I've walked by it so many times and I keep forgetting to bring it down, but I'm not sure. I, I don't know if I want to use this for class stuff, but I like the outside pockets a lot. We'll see. I'll let you know when I know. As far as the goodies that came with the water media, I have another fancy bag that it's packed in. Doesn't look like anything too high quality, but we'll see, we'll see. It's here, Kickstarter exclusive. Fun little keychain, I like that. One of these collapsible cups. I did receive one of these cups in uh, an art subscription box when I had a 50% off coupon, and I thought it came with two of them because the picture on their website showed two, at least I thought it did. <laughs> But I only got one, so having the second one is kind of nice because I do like having a clean and a dirty. They're pretty flimsy. You would need to be super careful. I'd probably use it kind of like that inside of the other container, the lid container. 
and I think they're a little bit hard to collapse again because it's so flimsy. Yeah, not, not super easy, but it does go in there easily. Then we have Marabou Graphics Aqua Ink and something else in there. I really like the Aqua Ink. We have Calligraphy Ink in the color Super Black by the brand Speedball. We have the Aqua Ink in the color Vermilion, which I have already, and Sunshine Yellow, which I also have already. Peerless Transparent Watercolors and a good little selection of these. That's fun. I also have these already, but these are things that run out, so I don't mind. I mean, they run out pretty quickly. Well, <laughs> pretty quickly is relative. They actually last quite a while, but I don't mind having more. Some fine liners in brush 0406 and 01. I don't see a brand on them, but it doesn't matter. Watercolor pencils, creative studio quality, made in Germany. I'll go ahead and open these. This would have been fun to have last week because I taught a class where we were using watercolor pencils. Oh well, daylight and all short. Here we are. I'll have to compare these to the ones I was using last week. I wasn't too impressed with the ones I was using last week. <laughs> Some generic looking brushes for oils, acrylics, or watercolor, but let's pull one out and see what they feel like. All right, I'm kind of intrigued by this little shaped one here. Okay, so they're pretty stiff. You could use this one with watercolor, but I would think that it would be better suited for gouache or acrylic. It's a little soft for oils, but not bad. Good selection of sizes and whatnot. Let's check out this round brush because I like rounds when I use watercolor. And they do have some of the sizing in them, so it's a little bit hard to tell till I can get that all out. Yeah, definitely stiffer than traditional watercolor brush, but you could use it. You could, you could. Then, I'm kind of curious what's in here. Ah, so a glass dip pen with a silicone thing that's hard to get off the tip. There we go. So I have one similar to this that was gifted to me and I really enjoy using it. And you can use it with things like this. So it'll be fun to try out. The Hanamule Britannia watercolor paper, 140 pounds, cold pressed, not cotton or it would say so. <laughs> and then we have, I assume these are watercolor brush pens, but they are not labeled and we don't know. <laughs> That's what I assume they are. Yeah, they definitely feel like a watercolor brush pen. And it's an actual brush. You can see if I splay the bristles that it's a brush. So that's kind of neat. That could be fun to play with. All right, well, the art supplies that came with the bags are just meh. <laughs> and I love the company Muse kits, so I'm not poo-pooing them at all. I think they do a great job and they're really nice people. But yeah, these supplies are just so-so. However, it, that's because I already have many supplies like this. If I were just new starting out in art, this would probably be way more exciting. But since it's all stuff that I have already played with and owned in the past, with the exception I have no idea what brand these markers are, but I have played with things that are similar, it's not as exciting for me which is fine. Just as a quick reminder, I remember when he was developing these, he did say he was developing these water bottle pockets for the slimmer water bottles because he didn't think we needed to carry big fat water bottles with us all the time. So they're designed exactly like he wanted. They're just a little bit tighter than I personally would want as designed. And then I changed my mind about playing with these art supplies. We definitely need to play with these art supplies. So that's what we're doing. Paper actually feels really soft for non-cotton paper. Oh, this is a block. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, it's glued on all four sides. This corner is the opening. Fancy. Let's try these watercolor pencils. Since I just used them in class last week, I am curious about them. See how they compare to the ones that I used in class. This orange feels smoother than the one I used in class, but the yellow didn't.
I think we should use the brushes that were in here too. Let's see how they work out, huh? All right, get some water. Ooh, that was a lot of water. Way too much water. Okay, the brushes hold a ton of water. So I can't tell, it almost seems like the paper is pilling up on me. Yeah, I think that's the paper pilling up. So apparently this is soft paper. Didn't like the pencil going down on it or Maybe it just disintegrates really easily or something. Wow, that's weird. These pencils are a little nicer than the ones I was using in class last week. The classroom all got to use praying watercolor pencils, but I was using Thornton, just an off-brand. Let's try these pigment liners and just make sure they're not dried out or anything weird like that. Here's the zero one. Super fine. <laughs> I don't really use those much at all because they are too fine. Zero 04, this is a good size. Zero 06, so the 4 and 6 are a little bit interesting. Not quite sizes that are common. They're not uncommon, but you know, I'm used to seeing the 0.3 moving up to the 0.5 in the microns, for example. And the one I'm really curious about, the brush. Looks juicy on the end. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh, that's nice. That is great. Super satisfying. We have our Peerless watercolors. I already know these are fun, but let's try this paper a little bit more and see what we think. Yeah, I think you can't go over this paper too many times with too many brush strokes, but that color is beautiful. The glow I can tell is coming through the camera just fine. That is beautiful, living up to its name, brilliant yellow. Yeah, this paper is weird, just pills up. I don't think I'm a fan of this paper, which is a bummer because Hanmule paper is not cheap. Granted, this is cellulose, but still, it feels so good like it. It's gonna be really nice, so soft, but it just comes apart. I really like these colors, however. Geranium pink, ooh, pretty. Nice and pale, well, pale in dilution. I like this name, Japonica Scarlet. Okay, yeah, it's like a dragon's blood, basically. Royal Crimson, pretty. Can you guys see the paper shreds in this swatch? Pretty obvious to me. Mahogany, that's a big rectangle of paint there. Oh, and beautiful color. So far I've run into two paints with the name Mahogany and I have loved them both. I really like browns. Ooh, sepia brown, hmm. Nice. This makes me definitely want to get out my Peerless watercolors and have some fun. They're so vibrant. It's just a joy to use them. I don't know. Did I just drop water there? Did the brush go across that? I missed that. I'll have to see on camera replay what happened to that sepia brown there. Paper shreds. Such pretty colors. Dark green. Excited for this one. Ooh. Dark green, but incredibly vibrant dark green. Holy moly. Sky blue should be pretty. Nah, it's just a thalo. Not what I was hoping for. We have one more page. Yep, one more page, but we are out of room on this block. So I'm just going to squeeze them in the gaps, which that'll be interesting. This is d deep blue. Okay. Wisteria violet. Oh, I like that one. Mm-hmm. That's neat where it touched that other paint. Pearl Gray. I like the name of that one. Oh, I don't have nearly enough water going for that one. Wow. Kind of a purple undertone. Real hard to see in this small swatch, but yeah, kind of a red or I think it's more violet undertone. That's neat. Anything else? No. So what I want to kind of see is on these Peerless watercolors, if we add some water drops even after they're dry, what happens? I love this one. This one's so pretty. 
Yeah, so the water drop is kind of dying the color out. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know if you know what I mean, but it's leaving white dots even in the dry one. That yellow you can see most clearly. Let me bring that yellow up a little closer so you can see the, the water drops, how they made that kind of lighter area inside there. It's kind of neat. Yet this one's looking darker. I guess we won't know till it dries. Well, now I don't have a choice if I want to continue playing. I have to take this off of the block. I usually have a palette knife over there in my pencil box, but I must have used it for something else and it's not there. So we'll use my next favorite thing to get paper off blocks, which is my ruler. But observe how pretty. This just has a life to it that I'm thoroughly enjoying. I just want to stare at that color. I should probably just make a painting with a lot of that color in it and put it up in my room where I can see it all the time. Where is this? All right, so let's try this thing out. Last time I used my glass dip pen, my water containers were plastic. This time they're glass. So I may want to get my plastic containers out in order to play with this because, or we could dump some water into this flimsy thing. I guess that'd be a good test of it, right? See how flimsy it actually is. Pour some water in here. That way we can rinse off this dip pen without being glass on glass, which would be dangerous. All right, graphics aqua ink. Let's see how this works with the dip pen. I know I already have this color and I have it open, but I'm gonna go ahead and open the new one. It doesn't matter. Wow, I just threw the glass pen and it lived. Thank goodness. This one I think was vermilion. What should we draw with vermilion? I think a little tulip would be pretty. Okay, so this particular inks, whoops, <laughs> I had a lot. <laughs> I was gonna say it's a little thick for this glass pen, but you know, when you have so much, you just don't give it a choice but to work, then, then that happens. I don't know, this dip pen seems a little scratchier than the one I was using before that was a gift from one of you guys that I still have and love and is in my ink bin, actually. I've used it in Inktober quite a few times, but it also could be this paper and it could be the fact that this ink might be just a little bit too thick for the pen. All right, I'm gonna try that water container over here. Hang on. It's not as flimsy as I expected it to be. Actually, once it has water in it, look, I'm pushing on the sides. I had to push really hard to get that to tip like that. Okay, well, that makes me happier about that little water container. I didn't even consider the fact that when you put water in it, it will weigh it down a little bit, so that's good. All right, let's go back to our tulip here. Now they're just getting messy looking. I don't like that so much. Okay, I'll clean that off in that water container. And I actually just left it leaning against the side of that water container and it doesn't look like it's trying to tip over, so that's good. All right, let's open this super black calligraphy ink that came in the kit. The little foam lid. Oh boy. Do you know what I want to do? And I'm gonna... Boop! <laughs> that was extremely satisfying. All right, let's try the dip pen with the super black. Hmm. Maybe better than the Marabou ink, but I don't think so. I don't think this is the best paper for this application. Actually, tulips have really long leaves, don't they? You know, we ruin that. Yeah, this isn't working. Not working at all. Okay, scratch that. Let's test this black ink in a different way. Let's use the brush. Get some water down on this really strange paper. Some ink. Okay, did what I thought it should do as ink, which is cool. Oh, look at the fine tip we can get with this brush. Woo, nice, look at that. Nice, so one of 
One of the last things we got in that little water media box were these brush pens here. I assume they are water-based brush pens. We can try a couple of these out and see what we think. I guess we're on the category here of tulips. We can just get some more tulips going. Let's do bigger. Ooh, that doesn't work very well. You gotta be slow. Slow. Okay, I probably filled in too much of this to be able to test anything with water, but I guess we can make a big blob of it, right? Well, that was pointless. It's all right, don't worry. I can still make this a tulip or maybe a cat. Get ourselves a darker red. This is wet, let's go in. No, so the water just pulls the pigment out of the pen if, oh, that is not a darker red. So you can't put this on top of water because it's that case where it will pull the pigment out of the marker instead of letting it spread out, which is fine. You just gotta know those things when you're using them because it can be a problem. All right, we kind of have a couple of colors we can try and mix together right here. Yeah, kind of works. So I've never been a big fan of using these kind of brush pens, watercolor brush pens on their own. I just don't find a lot of enjoyment in that process. So the purple kind of works, putting it in some water. But anyway, they're kind of fun if you are using them in coloring books though, because you can fill in little spaces and then you can take your water and spread it out in the gaps of the coloring book. So that is kind of fun to do. Let's see, we're getting mixing on the paper here, which is neat. But I also find this, you know, skipping feature frustrating where it skips a lot of the paper. So let's play with that mixing on the paper kind of feature. Let's get some yellow down if we can. We can't because the yellow, you can even hear it inside of here. It's dry. Dried out. The yellow is dried out. Okay, that's, that's lovely. We'll take this red. See. Yeah, that yellow was too dry to do a mix on the paper with the brush pens to get an orange, but if we grab a brush and do it. That works somewhat. We have our paper disintegrating a little bit underneath of it, but it looks kind of cool though. All right. Yeah, so out of these products, I'll probably just use these again in the future for sure. The rest, and the brushes, the brushes seem okay. I mean, I only tried one of the 10 brushes or whatever, but I guess we could try another brush here real quick. Just uh. Yeah, I think these brushes are maybe a little better than I first thought, but it's hard to say. And the pigment liners, of course. These are always useful. And I really like the brush one of that version. This paper, I don't know, probably use with gouache. See how it works with gouache, if it works with gouache. But it's not, not happy about a lot of layering, so even with gouache, you'd have to be careful. I layer a lot with gouache, I don't know about you guys, but maybe it would sit more on top of the paper than trying to soak into the paper and the fibers, I'm not sure. We'll find out, I guess, if I get this paper back out again anytime soon. All right, well, that was trying out all the products that came with it. Still love that yellow. <laughs> The bags do seem really nice, and I know I'm going to get good use out of them. No doubt about that at all. <laughs> so what do you guys think? Have you received yours if you were part of the Kickstarter project? What are your thoughts on them? If you didn't buy them and you're watching this video, what do you think of what I've shown you? I believe the package that I bought was 300 and I think after the extra supplies I added in 329 or 369, I can't quite remember. And then this and this were so-called freebies. And it'd be fun to hear your thoughts for sure. And I would say take your best guess if you think I'm going to really like the bags or if you think I might be disappointed by them. All right, guys, that is my first impressions of the Jazza's Carry All Studio bags. The big one, the little one. And I do love that color, mm -mm -mm, so pretty. All black, 
Makes my mind happy too, though. It does, it does. <laughs> All right, guys. I can't wait to read your comments, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Hello, my art-loving friends. I just received my Jazza's Studio Carryall. I said that backwards. Ah, apparently that was open. I never leave my cup open. That's really strange. Clean up on aisle one. Keep knocking things over. <laughs> Wow, look at that. Reflection looks like something not appropriate.